Hi everybody, I hope y'all are doing well. I hope y'all are having a great day today. I was out here just walking and I felt like I should make y'all a video. It was supposed to rain today and it didn't rain. So um, as I was walking around out here, I felt, okay, it's time to make a video. And so I don't have anything um, on my mind specifically to talk about. As I was walking out here and just enjoying the wind and the change of weather, um, it's supposed to be raining here this week, so there's, we have this kind of wind coming through. Um, it kind of came to me to talk about the sacredness of all things. And so I think I will touch on that, but as I was setting up here, um, it came through to talk about two worlds. And that there is a concept or an idea that you can kind of visualize in your mind of two worlds. Now this is just a metaphor, these are just things to visualize. We aren't actually in two worlds, but um, our perspective or the way that we perceive life could be either in this world or in this world. So there's two worlds and there's one world that's the sound mind. The sound mind is the world where the, irash the rational mind and the heart are in connection and they work together. So it is connected, you are connected and in line as a human to your heart and in turn the brain follows. And there is the rational mind that is focused on the brain and is constantly using the brain thoughts and thought streams to function, to make its decisions, and it uses and believes the thought streams. Now the thought streams that come through are irrational, you see, because the thought streams usually carry negative thoughts. So if we really look at our thoughts, they're going to be negative. And they're going to be kind of these thoughts that are demeaning. Um, they're also thoughts that keep us way into the future or way into the past. So they're not allowing us to connect with this moment, which is the only moment that there truly is. So the irrational mind believes in time and space and it believes in its thought streams. The sound mind has and hears and whatever the thought streams that come through the mind and the brain, but it doesn't believe them. It sees them for what they are, half-truths. Because if you really question the thought streams that are coming through your mind, you're going to find that they aren't true. Just ask yourself, is this true? Is this absolutely true? And you'll either find it's not true or it's a half-truth, but it is never the whole truth. So the heart knows this because the heart, now this is very big here, the heart has its own intelligence. The heart is intelligent on its own. Why? Because the heart is God, the heart is source, the heart is infinity, the heart is everything. The heart encompasses all of infinity and it knows everything. That is something the brain doesn't have. You see, the heart, what I'm talking about in the physical body is a metaphor, but what the heart is, as the sacred heart, comes way before the brain even came into play. So the brain is a creation of the heart. It's a manifestation of the heart. Isn't it interesting when you're born or when you're being created in your mother's womb, What's created first? The heart. Is the brain created first or is the heart created first? The heart is created first and you will hear the heartbeat and it'll be functioning and beating prior to anything else being manifested. So all the organs, everything else comes after. So the heart is first. It is what brings everything to life. So the heart is where we want to connect. The heart is where we want to abide. The heart is what we want to trust and have faith in because it has the intelligence that you wouldn't imagine. Now the brain is very limited, you see. The brain only knows what it's already learned, what, it's already, what has already been here. It's learning from past things, from past people, past teachings, past experiences. It's learning from past things. You could almost see it like AI. It's, or it's, it's learning, but it's not learning anything original. It can do amazing things. 
it can it can have all of this knowledge from the past it can learn right now in this moment and create things but what it's creating is not original you see that's different the brain is only working with things that already exist you see that and the heart is working with the intelligence of the heart the intelligence of the heart holds infinity and then any which way you want to go on top of that and the changes and the manifestations that come from that so it is a grander more absolute more truthful center to abide in if you're you know experiencing yourself are you going to believe the uh thoughts that come through the brain that are coming through and saying that you're unworthy that you can't do it that you're scared that something's going to happen that you're small that you don't have this you don't have that you're not good enough are you going to believe those lies that are the thought stream or are you going to believe your heart which says simply go have fun and try this play this do that you're held you're loved everything is good are you going to believe that now it doesn't always tell you that you're good that you're held that everything's good but as you go along the path you clearly see that because it shows you that in what your path becomes where what happens when we follow the brain and its kooky little plans and stuff like that well, it ends us up in a lot of different problems that we have to find our way out of. The heart is very genuine, very pure. It's not going to lie. It's not going to deceive. It's not going to struggle. It's not going to effort. It's not going to have all of these struggles that the brain has to problem solve about. Problem solving for the heart is very simple. It just chooses what it wants. It aligns with it and it goes. Just like GPS, I think I've talked about this before. When you use GPS, you just put in the address, you set it to go, and you go to the next step, and then the next one, and then the next one. That's exactly what the heart is asking you to do. And as you do that, it shows you in what unfolds for you that the way is there. Where you don't see a way, where you don't feel qualified, where you don't feel that you can do it, the heart says there is a way. And the brain is very different. When there is blocks, when there is things that say you can't do it, this and that, the brain will kind of egg you on. Yes, you cannot really do it. You can't really do this. You're not good enough. You're not going to do this. So you're going to have to do it this way. You're going to have to cut these corners. You're going to have to go talk to this person. You're going to sign a deal with that person. You're going to have to take a loan from them. You're going to have to work for this company first. So it's going to tie you up and bind you up in a trap for working or doing something for others or uh, believing someone is above you that there is other ways that you haven't um, accessed it's going to make you believe that there is something out there that you still need to find the heart is not like that the heart says you have everything you need here and now simply believe me and take the next step that arises for you that's what the heart's saying. The heart's saying, in the meantime, relax, play, enjoy, go about your life, but don't stress about this. It's already here. You may not see it here. It may not show up right now in the physical, but it's coming. It's all here. There's no reason to worry about this. And it also lets you know, if for some reason this doesn't show up, don't worry. You're going to see that this whole process was what you really wanted so it is always supporting you it's not tricking you it's not making you work it's not making you stay up at night it's not making you uh stressed anxious all of these things that the brain does the brain makes you believe that you're alone that there is nothing or anything that can help you that you need to find a way that this is hard that you have to do this the heart says, get out of the way. I got this. Can you align with that? Can you let go for once and get into your heart? And trust it. Trust it. You've trust, trusted your brain this whole time. 
and it's made you stumble, fall, do weird things, and this and that and the other. Hey, can we give it a little break? Can we give the heart a try? If you're ready to align with your heart, it's simple. We don't need to study a bunch of books. We don't need to meditate a bunch of hours. We don't need to even take a bunch of courses. All we have to do is simply want that for ourselves. So who's got the power here? You do. So right now, align with your heart and decide to start choosing your heart in all situations and all choices you make. If that's too much, start with, a, with one decision, then the next, and the other, just like GPS does. I mean, that's all we really need to do. That's all you have to do. Believe in yourself. Love yourself. Have faith in yourself. This is about you. It's not about anybody else. There isn't a group guru outside of you that's going to teach you something. There isn't a course outside of you that's going to teach you something that you don't know. There isn't anything outside of you that is going to give you permission or allow you to do this but yourself. So allow yourself now. Allow yourself to be all of you, to know all of you, to feel all of your emotions, to know everything about you and love it. To extend that love to others. Access that part of you. That is your true nature. It's always been there. It's always been there. As you're watching this video now, it's not a coincidence. You're here now because this is right where you need to be. You know what I'm talking about. So drop it now. Drop the silly story that you're just this little individual self here on this huge, beautiful, perfect planet. Drop the idea that this is just all some weird little thing that happened out of nowhere. No. This is infinity. This is perfection. This is you. This is creation. This is everything and nothing the emptiness and the fullness, the stillness. Drop into that stillness that you are right now. That's it. When you're aligned with the stillness that you are, nothing can shake you, nothing can move you. The physical appearances, the illusion, this wood, let's say there came a dinosaur right in front of me, it's an illusion. That's a big illusion, right, if, an, if a dinosaur came in front of us. But there are way bigger illusions that reside within us all the time. The childhood stories we keep up with. The stories of being hurt. The person that left us. The teacher that said this. The friend that betrayed us. The business partner that stole from us. All of these stories are just that. Stories. They're just stories. And you're just a character in this moment. Beautiful, but that's really all it is. It's not very serious. You're way grander than that. And when you see that, you see how fun this is and why you're doing this. It's just play. It's just play. Don't be scared by the illusion. Everything that's happening, all of the opposites, the polarities that's happening in the world around us right now, it isn't what you think it is. This is perfection. Everything is working with each other. Just like the parts of you that are sometimes in conflict within you are bubbling up and then releasing things and doing things. So is the world. So is everything around us. How can we experience hate? How does that even happen? Well, we had to have experienced love and then lost it 
or had to experience love and then been betrayed, had to experience love and then been abused, had to experience love and then been hurt. That's how we have everything we have here in this infinity. Because the polarity, the opposites, the so-called separation we so-called say it is, is not separation. It's a facet. It's a, it's a function of the appearance of fullness. Can you see that? Can you see how every piece of you is working together to create the experience and person you currently are. It's just a function of the ever-changing infinity we are. Every moment is different and new. So for it to be that, it has to evolve in this way. It has to trigger itself. It has to move itself. It has to agitate itself. That's how it works. Whether we like it or not, it's just how it works. And when you see how it works, and when you really uh, come to terms with that, it's actually quite beautiful, quite amazing. And it allows you to really drop the judgment you hold for yourself and everything around you. And that's not something you have to realize in an awakening. You can do that now. You can just try it. Whether or not you believe that you can or can't, just try it. Experience it for yourself. Stop judging people. Stop judging yourself and see what happens. You may not stop it all at once. You may not stop it, you know, immediately. You may judge a little bit here and there, but, you know, the less you do it, the more that you see that you become more relaxed and you become more loving. And you see more clearly. And all of a sudden you see the connection in everything. I was watching a show the other day. It was just a silly show uh, called The Righteous Gemstones uh, on HBO. And it's kind of like a really, really silly song uh, show. Anyhow, there is a character towards the end there that he, I guess, had some kind of militia thing or some kind of group he was running anyhow he used to really be a strong christian and have a church and all of these things and so he split from his family and at, towards the end of the show his family kind of reunites with him and he's doing really crazy things about to really cause some damage with some people and so i don't know at some point his wife comes in and has a heart to heart with him and says how is it that how can you do all this how can you do all this what do you think that jesus thinks of this because he you know, was a pastor of a church prior to all that. And he, he said, I don't even know who Jesus is anymore. Because what happens is we can become so disconnected uh, because we've gone so far up in the brain and believing the negative thought streams that come through, we can believe so much of that negativity to be true that we completely forget and completely just, it seems like it leaves our mind that there is any connection, that there is anything like God, that there is love, that there is connection or unity. It's like it leaves our brain. So in the show, you can kind of see it was like an insight for him. He said, I don't even know who Jesus is. Anymore. Like He realized that it, it had left him. And so when we begin to connect again and try these things, drop some of this judgment, try some of these things, all of a sudden we begin to feel more connection and the more connection we feel the more that we're in there the more we can experience oneness which is something that a lot of people don't experience because they are disconnected but as soon as you become more in connection you experience more of the oneness just like the character in that show because he believed so much of his thought streams about negative things that were happening he became totally disconnected from even the thought that there could be a God, that there could be a higher power, that there was anything else to live for. He had completely disconnected himself so much from really himself. When he's talking about he doesn't even know who Jesus is anymore, that's really saying, I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't know what my heart wants anymore. I don't feel my heart. I don't know it. I'm so disconnected from it. So if you're finding yourself in a space like this, 
uh, this is where we look at those two worlds that we were talking about in the beginning, the two worlds. Which world do we really want to live in? It is truly a choice. Do we want to live and reside in the world of the irrational mind? The mind that believes that it's unworthy, believes that it can't do anything, believes that it can't keep or have anything, believes that life is hard, believes that it's not worthwhile, that there's nothing good here, that everything's messed up, that everything's changing and turning into things that we don't want, and the world is horrible. Do you want to live in the world of irrational, or do you want to live in the world of the sound mind? The sound mind says, this world is beautiful. This world is always evolving. This world is always changing. And isn't that grand? Isn't that beautiful? I'm always evolving. I'm always changing. I don't know what I'm going to be or what I'm going to do, but this journey is beautiful. And I love it. And as those thought streams come in, uh, you're unworthy. You can't do this. You're not smart enough. The heart says, that's not true not a very strong voice that you can hear as when it needs to be it will be but when it's just you know like that it's just going to say it's not true and you got to hang on that heart and say okay i'm going to believe my heart i'm going to live in the sound mind in the world of the sound mind where we accept and allow life where we embrace change when we allow the work that needs to be done to be done within us, that is the sound mind. Which one will you choose? The rational mind or the sound mind? It's really your choice. So I think I will wrap it up and leave it here, that that is your choice. And if you feel some sort of fear, some sort of something rising up in you you want to go towards the sound mind you want to go towards the heart but there's still something there and you need or want someone to walk alongside you i offer one-on-one -on -one services i walk, offer an unconditional course that's on an ongoing basis we actually have an amazing deal going on right now so these are these are ways that you can connect with your heart and these courses, these one-on-ones, aren't about taking in a bunch of knowledge. It really is more about experiencing life, dropping things that no longer serve us, that aren't who we are. So if that sounds good to you, I do offer that. I have my information in the comments and in the description for you. I'd love to work with you. But more importantly, I'd love to just see you do this. It is you that has to do this. Just Begin now following your heart. And let me know how that goes. I'd love to hear about it in the comments or in the emails. I love getting all of y'all's emails and comments. Um, it really does brighten my day. So um, share that with me. Or if you'd like to work alongside me, again, I'm right here. The door is open. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. And if you're new here, I hope that you subscribe and come check me out again. Thank you so much for watching.